This video is just over a couple of examples of how to notate a set of numbers, meaning graphing them on a number line, writing them in interval notation, and writing them in set builder notation. So I have my first example here. All numbers greater than negative 72 over 47. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can do all three notations with this example that I have listed here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is graph it on the number line, and I almost always suggest that you graph it on the number line first. That's definitely going to help you visualize the interval notation and the set builder notation. Now I know that most people or most students learn with visual, so throughout this class you're going to see me use a lot of visual representation first. So first thing I'm going to do is graph my number line. Remember, the only number that I'm going to put on my number line is the very important numbers in question. In this case, that's only negative 72 over 47. Now, if this would reduce as a fraction, then I would do that. But other than that, I'm not going to change it in any sort of way. I'm not going to write the decimal representation of it. I'm not going to write it as a mixed fraction. It really does not matter here. All I want to do is figure out how to notate this in different ways. The next thing I need to do is greater than. So if I do greater than here, I'm going to represent all the numbers on this number line which are bigger than this number. So I'm going to find this and I'm going to shade all the numbers and I'm going to shade it all the way to the right, all the way to the right arrow. And if you want to represent what the right arrow means, that's perfectly fine. It means that it's going forever to infinity or a sideways 8. If you include infinity, great. If you don't write it there, no big deal. Just make sure you shade all the way to the arrow. Okay. Now the next thing that we need to do is put either parentheses or brackets on the end of this. This does not say anything about including, so that means the very left of this graph is going to have a parenthesis. Now, if you ever shade all the way to the arrow, then you do not put a parenthesis or a bracket on the very right end of the graph. The arrow represents that there. So I don't put a parenthesis or a bracket over here. Okay. Interval notation is the interval, smallest number to the largest number. So the smallest number on this graph is negative 72 over 47. I can see that it's not included, so it has a parenthesis on the left, comma, my very largest number on this graph is infinity, so I'm going to put infinity on the right. But we didn't put a parenthesis or a bracket here, but we need to put a parenthesis or a bracket here, and the question is which one? The answer for infinities is always a parenthesis, and the reason that we put a parenthesis with infinities is we can't ever get to the endpoint to include it. So infinities, whether it is positive or negative, is always going to be a parenthesis. Okay. All right, last but not least, the set builder notation. Remember, set goes with braces, or builder, Bob the builder, Bob needs some braces to fix his teeth that he never shows. Always X and then that bar means such that. Now we need to fill in the blank here. We fill it in with inequalities, and since I only have one number here, I'm only going to need one inequality. Now, my stipulations, I think, are a little bit more mandating than the online homework stipulations. If you only have one inequality, I'm going to mandate that my variable, or the letter X, is going to be on the left. It makes more sense if your inequality is written in that order. So I'm going to put my X here. The inequality that goes with greater than is obviously the greater than symbol, or the bigger than symbol. And then the number that you're going to put here is the number that we see. So basically, I just rewrite this code in this format. X is greater than negative 72 over 47. Now, a way to decipher between greater than and shading is if you only have one set of inequalities, if this guy is shaded to the right, then your arrow is going to be pointing to the right. So we can see here, I have my graph, my interval notation, and my set builder notation all finished for this example. 
let me work my second example that I have here. All the numbers less than or equal to pi. But first, I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can finish all three of these notations on your own. The first thing that we're going to do is graph it. Again, a visual helps us with the other two parts of this. So the only number that I'm going to put on my number line, which is pi. Now that's a funny symbol for 3.14 blah, 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 blah. But again, it doesn't matter. All I care about is the way that it's notating. Now I see here less than or equal to. Well, less than means smaller than, so I'm going to shade all the way to the left. And if you want to represent the left, that's perfectly fine. The left is represented by a negative infinity. So positive infinity on the right, negative infinity on the left. This is or equal to, so I have a bracket because I'm including my pi. But again, there should be no parenthesis and no bracket on the left over here. My interval notation goes from my smallest number, which in this case is negative infinity, up to my largest number, which in this case is pi. Infinity, remember I said we're always parentheses because I can't ever get to my endpoint to include it. And my right on this is a bracket because my graph was a bracket because my example said or equal to. Last but not least, set boner notation. I started with braces, x such that. Now I need to fill in the blank. Again, I only have one inequality here, so I always include my variable on the left. The symbol that I use is less than or equal to, less than or equal to. Remember, if you're shading to the left, then your inequality symbol should be pointing to the left. And then your number in question, which in this case is pi. So I've just finished my set builder notation as well as my other notations here. Now the important thing to note on the homework is you're not always going to be going from the words, which I have written here, to any one of these three things. The important thing to note is it might give you a graph and you convert it to interval and set builder notation, or it might give you one of the others, meaning interval notation and set builder notation, and ask you to fill in the missing pieces. So you might be going from any one of these formats to any one of the other formats. The other thing to be aware of on the online homework is it's going to be different from shading by hand and shading on the online homework. It's actually going to be easier on the online homework because it's basically only going to give you one version of the shading part to use. So just note to put the parentheses and the brackets in the right places. And that finishes interval, step builder, and graphing notation or the way to notate a set or groups of numbers.